The attention of the whole world is riveted to these territories because it is here that the ability of man to destroy on a global scale is tested. In the 21st century mankind treats nuclear weapons as a spectacular show, although not even 72 years have passed since Hiroshima, and Chernobyl and Fukushima will not cool down in the memory for a long time yet. Below we will tell you about the places on the planet where the nuclear powers flex the muscles of their arsenals. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. The site opened on January 27, 1951, when a 1 kiloton bomb was detonated here Nevada test site is located 100 kilometers north of Las Vegas and is the world's largest nuclear testing arena. The area is 3,500 square kilometers, by comparison, the area of Moscow is 2,500 square kilometers. The terrain is ideal for such work, the population density is low, the climate is dry and the geological structure is favorable. Bombs were exploded in all possible ways here, atmospheric explosions, until 1962, explosions in tunnels and boreholes, several unexploded charges still remain at a depth of several hundred meters, firing of miniature charges from cannons. All in all, more than 1,000 different explosions were carried out here. When the range was active, it was one of the attractions of Las Vegas, the mushrooms from the explosions were visible from the entertainment center, and test viewings were organized from a distance. Now it is possible to arrange a tour of the Nevada test site. Tourists are taken on a special bus route, where you can see real test mines, craters from nuclear explosions and preserved models of buildings, which were used to determine the strength of the destruction after the explosion. On September 17, 1950 for the nuclear test site on the Novaya Zemlya archipelago was created. The first explosion, underwater, took place on September 21, 1955. The test site was located on an Arctic island not by accident. Novaya Zemlya with a huge area, comparable to the area of the Netherlands and Belgium, was sparsely populated, 400 local residents were relocated to the coast of the island. Strong soils, a favorable tectonic setting and a cold climate ensured maximum test success, and ice-free ports ensured constant communication with the mainland. The range went down in history as the place where the biggest projectile, the Tsar Bomba, exploded. The power of the explosion was about 58 MGT, about 10,000 bombs dropped on Hiroshima. The sound from it was heard at a distance of 800 kilometers, and the seismic wave circled the globe three times. This happened on October 30, 1961. A total of 132 explosions, including underground explosions of varying power, which gained popularity due to reduced contamination of the territory, were conducted at the test site, which amounted to 94% of Soviet nuclear tests in terms of power. Today the test site remains the only operating one on the territory of the former USSR. Studies of the use and storage of nuclear weapons are conducted here. Like most modern test sites, it now acts as a research center. The United Kingdom became the third state to receive its own nuclear weapons. The United Kingdom has never tested charges on its territory during the entire existence of the program. On October 3, 1952 the frigate Plym was anchored near the Montebello Islands, west of Australia, despite the Green Continent's de facto independence from Great Britain, ties between the states were more than friendly. One of the frigate's compartments contained an atomic bomb, which by its size could not be placed on an aircraft. The charge was remotely detonated, and the frigate's demise was the beginning of Britain's nuclear era. The largest landfill site has long been the Maralinga site, which is 450 kilometers from Adelaide in South Australia. Atmospheric explosions were carried out here, and the area was seriously contaminated with radioactivity. It was not until 2000 that the process of cleaning the area was completed, and this despite the fact that the last tests took place in 1963. In 1994, the Australian government paid a financial compensation of $13.5 million to the aborigines of the Jirucha tribe. Since the 1970s, Britain has only detonated its bombs with the US at the Nevada test site. The last explosion was carried out by the British on November 26, 1991. Since then, the British Air Force and Navy have been practicing warfare without detonating nuclear charges. 
France detonated its first bomb on February 13, 1960, in Algeria. The Sahara would have been a great option for a nuclear test site had Algeria not reclaimed its independence. The French moved their tests to islands in the middle of the Pacific. So Polynesia was put on the nuclear map of the world. In 1966, the first test took place on Mororoa Atoll. Here the charges were detonated in special mines up to 800 meters deep. The world community regularly spoke out against such explosions in Oceania. In September 1966, as a result of detonation at an insufficient elevation, a fracture of several kilometers in the rock formed. This caused a danger of radioactive elements leaking into the ocean. The details of that case are still classified to this day. France conducted its last test on the atoll on December 28, 1995. Since the ratification of the treaty banning nuclear tests in 1998, the Fifth Republic has not detonated bombs, but has worked actively to design aircraft and naval vessels that can carry nuclear charges. Today it has 100 submarines and aircraft capable of carrying nuclear charges. On October 16, 1964, China conducted the 596 test near the dried-up Salt Lake of Lob Nor, which made the country a nuclear power. The explosion came as a shock to the world, no one expected the Chinese to be able to build their weapons so quickly. The nuclear tests in this desolate and desolate area lasted 32 years, ending in 1996, and were recognized by international experts as the dirtiest. During the explosions, radionuclide contamination spread to adjacent mountain glaciers. According to scientists in neighboring countries, the concentration of radioactive substances in the ice has increased many times over the pre-nuclear era. If before 1964 the Lob Nor area was at least grazed by rare flocks of sheep and desert plants, now it is a completely lifeless area. On May 18, 1974, India detonated its first nuclear charge. The test was called the Smiling Buddha, and it was conducted at a site in the densely populated state of Rajasthan. However, the former British colony did not become an acknowledged world nuclear power and third world leader until 1998, when a series of five nuclear underground explosions were detonated at the same site. India thus showed its power to neighboring Pakistan, which was also actively developing nuclear weapons at the time. The site is now a closed area. Explosions are not conducted, but bombing techniques and the use of nuclear weapons are practiced. India is one of the nuclear triad states, three nuclear delivery vehicles, ballistic missiles, submarines, aircraft. On May 28, 1998, Pakistan detonated six nuclear explosions at a test site near the city of Chagai. The charges were placed in a kilometer-long tunnel dug in Mount Kokambaran. The site was chosen as far back as 1976. The decisive factor was the fact that the Rasko range consists of granite and the locals are mostly nomads. Such conditions made it possible to conduct the tests with the least damage. After the first explosions there is almost no information about Pakistan's nuclear program, and no new tests have been conducted. The test site is located near the city of Kilhu in Hamjian Pukto province and has three tunnel entrances, the south, east, and west portals. The first nuclear test was conducted on October 9, 2006. Since then, the DPRK has conducted tests in 2009-2013. The power of the explosions is classified, but nuclear experts estimate them to be between 2 and 10 kilotons in TNT equivalent. On January 6, 2016, an underground hydrogen bomb explosion of about 10 kilotons was detonated at Paniri. The test site is operational, and the DPRK government periodically announces new weapons tests. Tests are conducted underground, which causes earthquakes of varying amplitude. It is the recording of seismic waves that allows an explosion to be identified. Scientists and the military of neighboring South Korea are constantly monitoring events in the DPRK through seismological observations. The most recent, to date, test took place on September 9, 2016. The U.S. Geological Survey recognized tremors in the Punguri area and identified them as an explosion. The power of the charge is estimated at 10 to 30 kilotons. The DPRK government periodically announces new steps in its nuclear program, but due to the closed nature of the country, it is difficult to verify the validity of the statements.
The country is not officially recognized as a nuclear power, but world experts are inclined to believe that Israel possesses nuclear weapons of its own production, which took several decades to develop. Because of the limited territory of their own and the lack of colonies, the country's leaders had to look for a place to test the created charge. That was the island of Bouvé. On September 22, 1979, an explosion similar in its characteristics to a nuclear explosion was detected on the territory of South Africa. The same test occurred in 1981. It is believed that Israel conducted the test here, providing the South African government with information on nuclear development in exchange for the test sites. The fact is that the Republic of South Africa had already been engaged in the development of atomic weapons for several years. In August 1977, the preparations for the first test were revealed using a satellite of the Soviet Union, the space data was used to decipher the creation of mines in the Kalahari Desert. Under pressure from the world community, the development stopped, and the explosion did not take place at that time. P.S. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was adopted by the 50th session of the UN General Assembly on September 10, 1996 and opened for signature on September 24, 1996. This document globally bans even the testing of nuclear charges. But there is one peculiarity, among the 183 states that have signed it, the young nuclear powers of Pakistan, India and the DPRK are not among them. And the United States, China and Israel have not ratified the document. Of the nuclear club only Russia, France and Great Britain fully supported the treaty. The doomsday clock asterisk now stands at 23 hours 57 minutes and 30 seconds, the closest the world has come to nuclear midnight was only in 1953, when the US and the USSR tested thermonuclear weapons. Doomsday Clock is a project of scientists at the University of Chicago. It is a virtual dial that shows the time until the conditional midnight. At midnight, a nuclear war will begin. This is how scientists estimate the risk of the use of weapons. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.